Welcome back to the channel everybody. Welcome to a new video and yes, I am sitting in traffic today heading back from Los Angeles from LA and it is a drive that I would not wish upon my worst enemy. But I figured while I'm sitting in this traffic driving a six-speed manual transmission and getting a little mini workout, I thought I would shoot a video and talk about this recent, recent story that was on one of the Demon 170 forums where this gentleman sadly and tragically lost his car, but happily is okay. And when I say lost his car, I mean somebody ran a red light and it appears that this thing is totaled beyond repair. It will never make a comeback. But the good news is that he's okay and survived the accident and that's a testament to the beast beastliness of these challengers which i'm driving one now that there's not a whole hell of a lot of cars that are as huge and heavy as these things other than these evs with the big big giant battery packs but thank goodness he's okay and one thing i want to say before i get into the meat of this video is it's it's kind of hilarious on top of the sadness of the car going away to watch the comments and almost this elation of all the other Demon 170 owners or people in this group that are immediately coming back and saying, hey, you wanna get rid of your engine? Hey, you wanna get rid of any parts? Hey, if you wanna sell the salvage? I mean, they are just every other comment. And I know also that there's a bunch of them thinking immediately, yes, one less 170 on the market or ever to go on the market, which will increase our values and make these things worth the same value as a Bugatti Chiron or Lamborghini Aventador or some other exotic car, which, man, there's one guy, I can say his, well, I'm not going to say his name, but he owns, it's funny, he owns a dealer and he's always commenting in there, these things would be worth $500,000 and it just, it, it just cracks me up. And then there's another guy that, uh, you know, beats on me and and TK and Butter for our videos about the demon values, even though he's the one that, uh, was the one that broke the story and did a video about the uh, top speed issues with the cars. But they are very, as TK would call them, very salty. But in the comments section, boy, are they elated about this car getting totaled, it sounds like. Everyone, I mean, every other comment is, uh, hey, can I get the engine? It's kind of like if a, if a dude lost his, lost his leg, let's say. Just, you know, I don't know, on a job site or something, dude's leg gets chopped off and all his his buddies and people he works with comes up and like hey man you're not going to need your shoes anymore you're not going to need two shoes anymore can i get your extra shoes and you know you're gonna need your uh two-legged pants can i get your pants and it's just <laughs> dude just lost his demon 170 which for many people this was you know a long-awaited amazing dream come true and uh especially if you're one of the ones that was actually driving it which this guy was driving his car and using his car and loses his car in a in a bad accident of a guy that runs the red light so i would say you know like let's feel bad for the guy before we start going after his parts aye, aye, aye. but anyways let's talk about the subject here that I think this is the perfect example and the perfect reason to have this conversation. Now, I've talked about it in the past. It's probably been a year or two where I, I touched on this subject with all the people that were paying humongous markups on the Hellcats, the Red Eyes, Scat Packs, and the point I got across a few times there in actual circumstances where actually with a Durango or one guy got his Durango stolen and never recovered and the insurance company would not pay him what he paid for it because he paid a huge markup because the way insurance works is you're going to have a normal policy which 90 percent of us have which is basically an actual cash value policy meaning the insurance company if they total the car they're going to pay you what it would cost to replace that car or you're going to have an agreed value or a stated value policy where an appraisal was done research was done and you and the insurance company agree on a value. Now, you can read a lot about these policies and you gotta check really and read really closely in the fine print with a lot of these agreed value, state of value policies because just because you agreed on, let's say, you know, $200,000 to replace my Demon 170, the reality of it is, is 
many insurance companies or some insurance companies have have it clearly in that same policy saying this is the max we will pay but if we can replace that car meaning if you can replace that car for 170 or 160 that's what we're gonna pay if we find that it's readily available to replace for that price we will now I would say that based on a stated value or read value policy as long as there's not any fine print that would allow them to wiggle out of it and just know insurance companies are good at wiggling out of stuff that you could probably fight that I know that in the couple of cars in my lifetime that I've had totaled I've had to fight the insurance company to get them to pay what it would really cost me to actually go out and find a car now insurance companies pay millions of dollars for software tools to be able to accurately determine value on cars so that they never overpay and most of the time they're gonna lowball well with the red eyes with the Hellcats with the scat packs and people who paid markups the problem with those was that you didn't really know what 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 you could find a car for if you just spent a little more time looking and you didn't know how much markups unless you walked onto the dealerships and looked at the addendum stickers and you didn't know for example that there was a five thousand dollar window tint sticker which I showed you all once before and there's no way an insurance company's going to say oh well you know since you paid five grand for window tint we're gonna give you five grand for window tint because nowhere on the on the planet Earth is window tint five thousand dollars period unless it's gold or something I mean it's just it's not so if you paid a markup on those cars which did depreciate the Hellcats did drop in value they aren't worth anywhere near the markups do I do I think they held their value decent yeah I mean if you got a 2020 red eye right now you're still you know with reasonably low miles on them you're still in the in the 70s so that's not bad considering you know I paid like 83 for my 2020 and so it's not horrible but if you paid let's say in 2021 or 2022 a 50,000 which many people did 50 or even 25,000 dollars markup on a Hellcat or a Hellcat Red Eye and then total that car and you don't have an agreed or stated value which that would not be considered no matter how much you want to fight with me on this a collector car insurance company even a even a company let's say Haggerty or something a collector insurance company likely wouldn't even consider that to be a car that is is a collector's car so if they're gonna look at what they're going for what you can get them for and what they're going for on the secondary market as well to replace your car with another 2022 with the same exact miles and it's gonna be if you paid 50 grand over probably 60 70 thousand dollars less than you could buy one for right now because you pay that markup imagine taking that bath imagine taking that financial haircut now those we expected people to get soaked on and creamed on those cars because there was no way the markups were going to be recoverable on those cars despite what the dealers said about them appreciating in value well we've seen the outcome there they have not appreciated in value but Brad mine's worth a lot of money try and sell it I, you know I'm sorry it's just not I'm saying in a special edition one of 200 swinger edition six-speed manual sublime green and it's it's one of you know probably out of the 200 one of 10 that have the hood pins on it I mean I, it's this is how stupid people get and and I and I've lost my ass on this thing it's probably fifteen thousand dollars less than what I paid for this thing just one year ago with twelve thousand nine hundred twenty three miles on it so those didn't but what about the demon 170s now that's an interesting interesting dynamic which I got to tell you this one this one twists my brain up a little bit because the prices are all over the place I mean at the beginning of the hype three hundred thousand dollars quarter of a million dollars for one of those things today all over the demon 170 groups and eBay and everywhere 160 159 157 155 which means you make them an offer if it's been sitting a while you get it for even less than that I'm not talking about the auction cars that went for low but have huge fees attached to them I'm talking about cars private party 20 miles on them 50 miles on them you know 100 miles on them super low mileage cars 
that are in the 150s, which I've told you all from the beginning, like the day they announced this thing, they would settle down around the 150 range because you can get Demon 2018 Demons in the 120 range. So it would make sense that this would be a little bit more money. It's the newer version. The hype still exists a little bit. So that car, I would say an insurance company could argue really well that to replace that car, his car, this guy's Demon 170, would really be in the 150 to 160 range, depending on the spec, right? I mean, does it have the carbon fiber wheel, wheels? Does it have the, you know, sunroof? And, you know, does that hurt the value or help the value? I mean, there's a lot of opinions on these things, but bottom line is the insurance company's probably, I'm going to guess, going to hit him at MSRP. They're going to hit him at, well, the sticker's, you know, 110000 or 125000 And then he's going to have to fight with them if he has a normal insurance policy like most of us have, an actual cash value policy, replacement value policy, he's going to have to fight like hell because I'm going to bet anything, could be wrong, but I'm going to bet anything, and I'm not going to assume with him, but let's just, as a example, assume that he paid $100,000 over for his Demon 170. I'm talking about, right out of the gate, insurance company's very likely going to say, we won't give you We'll give you sticker. We'll give you the what's on the sticker for that car. That would be like lucky if they hit you at that up front. They're not going to understand that a Dodge Challenger with 3,000 units is actually a collector car. Most likely you're going to have to explain to them that it is because insurance companies understand all the normal cars, but they're going to see it as a Challenger red eye probably when they put the VIN number in. So you're going to have to go through all the gymnastics to help them understand and then fight like hell with comparables of cars that are for sale and then try to explain to them what they're actually sold what the ones sold for that did sell and what you can buy one for today for and the insurance companies again with their software and their their appraisers who are going to do tons of legwork to find out what you can really get one for and I mean calling some of these dealers calling some of these private party owners emailing messaging on ebay and saying what's your cash price today and then they're going to come back and lowball them with that number and that number is probably i'm going to guess once they get through fighting they might land at around that 150 but i think they're going to hit him a sticker and then he's going to have to explain to them all the reasons why it's worth more and it's a special car and it's a collector's car etc so so I think this guy, if he paid up a huge markup, this is one of the humongous problems with paying these giant prices on these 170s. Is if you don't get a stated value or agreed value policy and that car gets totaled, you're screwed. I'm hoping this guy has that and I'm hoping his insurance company doesn't screw with him too much. But I'll tell you, I would be terrified if I paid a massive markup on anything, anything, and didn't have a stated value or agreed value policy and felt comfortable that that insurance company gave me that value with the appraiser when I got that policy of what I paid for that car, including that humongous markup. But even then, they need to be able to justify that when they agree on that value. And there's a good chance that even on an agreed value policy, that may have been challenging to get because it was a new car without a lot of comparables to know what exactly they're worth other than what the asking prices were on the market. And the insurance company may have come back and said, we can't do that big of a price, but we can do 150 or we can do 125 or something like that. So I think there's a possibility there's a lot of 170 owners out there that are way underinsured based on what they paid for those cars because they're not gonna see those markups get paid back to them. I honestly hope this guy is okay uh, with the finances on it. Thank God he's okay from the accident. And the insurance company gives him everything he paid for it. But I'll tell you right now, Prices have dropped a lot. They're all over the place for that in the 150 range, 159, 160 range. And if he paid 200, if he's an early adopter, early buyer, you know, the VIN number means nothing because the VIN numbers were jumbled around But when the car showed up. But depending on what he paid for that car and how much of a markup, if he paid a markup, he could be in trouble. So I just wanted to share that. It's another reason you gotta be careful with markups. Some people don't think about that. I mean, it's 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 a challenge. Now, it's the other person's fault, most likely, who ran the red light. So he may have to sue them above and or sue their insurance company and them 
to try to get the value moved up on that because, or his insurance company will have to come in over the top and pay part of that as well to help offset what the other insurance company either refused to pay and then let them subrogate and go fight them for it. I mean, no matter how you cut, cut it, considering that it's the other person's fault that's their insurance company, you know, it's going to be a dance with multiple insurance companies to get this thing figured out. So definitely an interesting situation. Just wanted to share that. Sorry for this guy who, uh, you know, totaled his car. Uh, it's very unfortunate of all the all the cars that could get hit. And uh, I wish him nothing but the best. So with that, everybody, please like, subscribe, comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.